Well, let me share with you my story or our story of palliative care in Jordan. Early on, at 2001, you can see this picture illustrates one of the indicators of morphine consumption. Jordan way below the average uh, global consumption of morphine. And here, this is the developed countries like North America. It was very tragic to see that. At that time, nobody knows what's the palliative care. Nobody knows, even myself. At that time, I was a palliative care consultant, and the first time I heard about it, I said, what's palliative care? There was absolutely no awareness about the concept of palliative care and pain management. At that time, there was lack of awareness about palliative care and pain management, fear of opioids among the professionals as well as among the people. They always say, don't give morphine, that will make addiction. And it's dangerous. And there, is no, there was no single professional working in palliative care. No immediate release morphine, only IV morphine, and sometimes sustained release morphine as a tablet. At most, people would use bethidine injection. And morphine prescription was limited only for three days. So this is the situation before we get started. At 2003, there, uh, the project started as Jordan Path of, uh, Initiative for Path of Care. It was WHO demonstration project. It's very interesting to know how it started. Actually, it started with a dream. It was a rich man from Jordan who went to Dr. Jan uh, uh, from WHO Cancer Affair, and he said, I have a dream. I can see the problems in the uh, Middle East, many problems, all we know. And he said, I wish to, uh, to in, uh, put a finish for pain in Jordan and for Middle East, and I have one million dollar. Can you help me? And then Dr. Jan called Frank Ferris, He's my teacher, my friend, and my mentor from San Diego Hospice and Palliative Care. And they started WHO project to implement palliative care in Jordan and to be a model for palliative care in the region. And they formed what you call it National Palliative Care Committee, which consists of decision makers, actually, uh, in addition to physicians and healthcare workers in Jordan. They thought that we would like to start that. We need to do this. I will back again to this slide, but just to illustrate it, we are talking, this is WHO Path of Care Project. It was first time adopted in Jordan, and then they copy it, and they found it it's very much useful. Then many countries has used the same, the same one. It is, talks about this triangle. For us to implement Path of Care in Jordan, we need to start with education. We need to have first, second, and third level of education and training for Path of Care. We need to have the leaders and to we need to raise awareness about part of care among the professionals. And then we need to make sure, if we have all these people and no drug is available, that doesn't work. So we need to make sure that opioids and other necessary drugs, essential drugs, are available. And then we talk about implementation. And then they found for all this to get done, we need to talk about policy. We should, should change the policy, otherwise it would not happen. Now again, this is the uh, four pillar. It's about uh, changing policies to make uh, morphine available and is accessible for all citizens, to make the drug available, and then education of uh, healthcare workers and to come up with the leaders of palliative care actually who will be pioneer for palliative care in Jordan. And then we talk about implementation. Implementation has to, to have short, intermediate, and long-term outcomes. And it has always been challenging to talk about that uh, in palliative care in Jordan. People, uh, especially decision makers, are not still prepared for this concept of thinking. What was done in the first uh, one or two years? Here is uh, Dr. Frank Ferris, Dr. Jan, and WHO minister, and other people who actually started this. They talked about national policy, drug ability, and education. It was 60 policy makers and clinicians who first met to adapt, uh, start uh, implementing palliative care in Jordan. And then that was uh, the first uh, palliative care session. And I was one of the people who involved in this class. When I, I said, when they invited me, I said, okay, but what is palliative care? And then uh, we came to this class. It was 32 participants, and they gave three weeks a uh, palliative care workshop from my experience. The first week 
was interesting, not bad, but I thought from my perspective, this will add a new knowledge for me, but nothing changed. In the first week, I had many wonderful ideas and knowledge, but again, it didn't reach the, the, the point where it reflect in my practice. The second two weeks, we started bedside teaching, and a huge difference came in my mind. And by the end of the sessions, I went to Frank, I said, listen, Frank, I like the path of care, and I would like to make it my career. Can you help me? And then they gave another sessions, and then they started to uh, uh, do what we call it, preparing pioneers for palliative care. I, I, was the, I had the, uh, the privilege to be the first one who joined a hospice palliative care program at San Diego Hospice and Palliative Care. It was called International Philip Program that extended for 10 years, go and forth between San Diego and KHCC. And I was the first uh, physician who gets specialized in palliative care in Jordan. So what happened? You remember we talked about the three pillars, the regulations, the medicine, which make to be available, and the education. The, the medicine regulation had changed. Now morphine is available for cancer patients. Instead of three days, it is 10 days. Still, we need to, to make it more, one month, for example. But again, it, it makes things easier. And then uh, immediately release morphine has been manufactured by one of the companies in Jordan. And you can see the rapid increase, actually, in morphine consumption in Jordan. It's five times. That's very remarkable. And then uh, when we talk about education and training, uh, we managed to, to, to get pioneers in palliative care. After I started, two of my friends actually joined the same program, but unfortunately they recently left Jordan to another country. So I'm still alone in Jordan. Again, but it was remarkable that we started uh, education for other people. Now there are more than 100 people in Jordan who get training for palliative care. It started with efforts of sending hospice and palliative care. Then for the last one year, we did two sessions for education of palliative care for healthcare workers. It consists of teams for palliative care from different hospitals, and we always ask them to come as a team. It has to be a physician and a pharmacist, a physician and a nurse. And we ask the hospital, which sent them, to give them the authority to practice where they work. Well, the success story, actually, the good and the bad thing is that the key uh, success was where I work in King Jose Casa Center. King Jose Casa Center now, it has multidisciplinary team for palliative care, including physician, chaplain, nurses, and social worker. And palliative care, as I heard from one of the pioneers, Frank Ferris, it was one of the most rapidly growing palliative care in the world. Now we have 400 patients per year, and we do have comprehensive palliative care. We do outpatient clinic, we do have home care, and we do have our units in our hospital. Now, morphine consumption has been increased. As a result of palliative care service at KSCC, it increased 3.3 fold in a couple of years. Now, as, as this uh, article says, King Jose Cancer Center is now developing into a reference of excellence, not only in nationwide, but also for the region. And here, the, it's a very interesting slide, which shows in 2004, and you can see at one point here, between uh, 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 November, between uh, uh, August and October, at this time, which there was a short increase in morphine consumption. And that was the, the time when palliative care started at KHCC.